Welcome back to the Science of Sailing program at Piers Park Sailing Center. This video is for level 2 sailors practicing marlin spike seamanship. Today we'll be going over important knots and lines on a boat. We use a lot of important knots at Piers Park. One of these is the clove hitch. We can use clove hitches to secure the tiller or other objects if there are no bungees or cleats available. Here's how to tie it. Find some sort of horizontal pole to tie the clove hitch on. Start by laying the line over the pole. Take the end farther from you and cross it over the front of the end that's closer to you so that it's behind the pole again now. Just take that same end and loop it underneath itself. And there you have a clove hitch. The next important knot is a barrel knot, which has many different uses. It's a kind of stopper knot because it's tied to keep lines from slipping out of narrow passages like grommets. We might tie it at the top of a sail if a clip breaks, but perhaps the most important use we have for barrel knots is to brag to other sailors about the cool way you can tie your sperries. Here's how to tie it so you can show off too. Dangle a line over your hand with your thumb sticking up. Take the end of the line farthest from you and cross it over so that it's behind your hand again. Keep crossing the line over towards your thumb until you have at least three lines in a row. Or a million. The last thing is to take the loops off your hand and pass that same end through the middle of the loops. Just pull and you're done. Or you can do it the cool magical way by twisting both ends of the line over each other and then pulling the ends. The next knot is the square knot. We use this knot most often to tie the ends of the sail cover when we're de-rigging. To tie a square knot, cross the end of the right side over the left and twist it under. Then take the line in your left hand and twist it over the one in your right hand. The easiest way to remember this is right over left and left over right, so that it looks like a life jacket to some people. Doesn't look that much like a life jacket to me, but oh well. This is how it will look if you tie it wrong, the infamous granny knot. Aside from these knots, we have round turns with half hitches. You might know half hitches as the Chinese staircase if you've ever done gimp. Or maybe that's just me. But anyway, we use round turns and half hitches to secure tow lines and anchor lines, usually for island trips. We tie it around the mast first by making a bite, wrapping the line three times around the mast, then using the remaining line to tie three or more half hitches. Sometimes, a tow line might come undone if it's not tied securely enough. In that case, you should practice being able to coil up the line and heave it 30 feet away to pass it to the next boat and save the tow. Now, moving on to important lines on the boat. The boom vang is this line here that works to hold down the boom when you're sailing. On light wind days, we loosen the boom vang so that the boom can move around and make as much of a pocket in the sail as possible. This way, it's easier for small puffs of wind to carry the boat forward. On high wind days, we tighten the boom vang so that the sail won't rise up and twist, which will spill the air from the top of the mainsail. It's the same concept for the outhaul. The outhaul is attached to the boom and the end of the mainsail to pull the lower corner, or the clue, of the mainsail tight. On low wind days, loosen the outhaul so that the sail can catch more wind and form a pocket shape. On high wind days, pull it tight so that the sail flattens and can't twist or spill wind out. 
The reefing line is in a similar place as the outhaul. It runs down the boom and also connects to the mainsail, except that the reefing line is only used to depower a boat on high wind days. It goes through a reefing cringle in the mainsail to pull it down so that there isn't as much surface area to catch the wind. Then we have the traveler, right in front of where the skipper sits. Sometimes we want to sail very close to the wind to reach our destination. By pulling the traveler closer to the skipper and also closer to the wind, we can fine-tune our sail trim to catch more wind without going into irons. The traveler is especially useful during racing, when we want to point higher into the wind to round a mark. Great, here's a list of terms we went over today. Look back through the video if you missed anything. And now you're familiar with some of the most important lines and knots we use on a boat. We'll see you next time.